Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of the Advent season. I want to announce today that our Christmas Eve service will be available via your daily email link or on our YouTube channel on December 24th at 4 p.m. The following Sunday, December 27th, we will be presenting a worship service that is produced by the leaders of our annual conference. That day we will join 350 other congregations in virtual worship as we celebrate together the first Sunday of Christmas. It is with great sadness that I share with you the news of the death of two of our longtime and cherished members. Doris Jenkins died last Sunday following a long period of complicated illness. We will miss her dearly. Our deepest condolences to her four sons and their families. We also received news of the death of Donna Frank on December 9th, a member here since 1963. Our thoughts are with her family at this time as we give thanks to God for her good life and for the many contributions that she made within this fellowship. These last two months have been a season of passings for our congregation and our separation physically from one another and from those who mourn is especially poignant at this time. But in this incarnate season, we praise God that he has come to be with us where we are so that we may in hope and trust grow to become like him. And so this day we come to worship our God who is a God of good news. The scripture tells us that we are like Mary who was, faily, who was highly favored. We are like the shepherds who were told to not be afraid. We were like Elizabeth, who was promised that nothing is impossible. So let us then sing like Mary, laugh like Elizabeth, and trust like the shepherds. Let us worship. I dream of standing outside the sanctuary and greeting people on Sunday mornings. I dream of eating native food from my childhood days. I dream of seeing and talking to my friends after school. I dream of visiting with friends. I dream of sharing laughter and memories with our families and friends. I dream of trying food stations at Costco. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for this tremendous love. Amen. Oh, 
Let us pray. With the psalmist, we call out to the Lord. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. Seeking salvation from on high, we pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our willingness to be loved, but also our reluctance to love. We confess our readiness to accept your forgiveness, but also our refusal to forgive. We confess our eagerness to call upon you in our need, but also our resistance to follow you without question. In this Advent time, forgive us and redeem us in your mercy. Come to us anew, and by your grace, assist us to receive you with joy as the shepherds, with praise as the angels, with obedience as Mary and Joseph, with love as you have loved. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Know that through God's love we are restored and saved. For God entered our world in Jesus Christ, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Hear then Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, before you could speak, you were speaking creating all of life, leaping in wombs, jumping for joy. You have always found a way to show up in our midst, particularly on our fearful or lonely days. So today, as we hear your word, we ask that you would move again, stir in us, speak to us, Fill us with the Holy Spirit. And if we are not able to hear your word clearly, then give us those who will point out your presence in delight and joy. Help us to trust and remember that before you could speak, you were speaking. So here and now, Creator God, we are listening. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And in this, and this is her sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel of departed from her. Amen.
gospel lesson is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 46b to 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we're getting close to Christmas, and soon we will tune all of our senses to the reason for our anticipation. We long to hear the newborn cry, to smell the hay and take comfort in the tranquility and simple message of hope and love that comes from this baby when he is born. For this birth touches the depth of our human longings, our need to know that there is light in the darkness, that our hopes will be fulfilled, and that the sorrows and injustices of this world can be made right. That is the message of Christmas. But before we meet the baby, we have the joy and honor of hearing from his mother. Both of our scriptures today are Mary's stories. The story of the Annunciation in which the angel Gabriel announces to Mary that she is favored by God to bring to life the Savior of the world. That was the first part. The second is what in biblical history is called the Magnificat. And it's the response of Mary to this announcement. And in this song she sings and gives witness. She magnifies the Lord. Now let's not pass too quickly over that verb, magnifies. It's the point of the story. Mary magnifies the Lord. When we hear this passage, and especially when we hear it sung in the Magnificat by Handel from the Messiah, it sounds so much like the most exuberant praise. And indeed, Mary does sing, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. But the singing is not the magnifying part. Mary's soul, the essence of her being, magnifies the Lord. Now let's think about this in terms of a magnifying glass. What does a magnifying glass do? Well, of course, it enlarges things. It makes objects more visible and therefore easier to see. And what Mary sings about in the Magnificat allows us to see the world like God sees it. Mary magnifies God's dream for the world. And that dream is that her baby is going to turn the world around. The transformation that Mary sings about is both personal and political. It's about individual transformation, and it calls also for societal change. Mary magnifies the vision that God wants the world to change. Now, I want to read this passage to you from the message version of the Gospel of Luke because this translation removes some of the lovely familiarity of this beautiful passage and lets out the raw power of God's vision. Here's what Mary sings. Her mercy flows in wave after wave, on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arms and showed his strength and scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses and pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet and the callous rich 
were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled the mercies high. In this song, Mary magnifies a God who requires justice. She enlarges a vision of reversals that let those who suffer and who are treated unequally or without dignity and says that they are going to have their fortunes reversed. And change is not only going to come to those who suffer. Change is going to be experienced by those who cause the suffering, the rich who prosper at the expense of the poor, and those who live lavishly indifferent to those in need. The message that Mary magnifies is that this baby whom God has blessed her with will be God's greatest magnifying glass. He is coming so that his every step, his every deed will magnificently illuminate, demonstrate, enlarge God's vision of justice and equity for all people. Jesus is God's promise fulfilled. Well, I can never hear this song of Mary without connecting it with the very first words her son proclaimed as he started his ministry. It's told in the fourth chapter, and that is when he was a 30-year-old man. Jesus began his work. First, he went into the wilderness and was led by the Spirit for 40 days. And at the end of that time of trial, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he returned to Galilee and started magnifying the Lord himself. And the first thing that is recorded that came from his mouth is this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Well, you know the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Well, part of who Jesus became was shaped by his mother, who dared to trust in a God who worked outside of the lines, in unexpected places, and through seemingly unimportant people. Mary magnified the Lord, and her son became God's greatest magnification. Well, Christmas is an invitation for all of us to magnify God. The baby in the manger has the transforming power to make each of us magnifiers of God. And so every time that we engage in an act of compassion, every time that we stand up for someone else, every time that we use our resources to further healing and hope in our world, we magnify the Lord. And it all comes down to trust, trust like Mary, who believed that God blessed her to be a participant in turning the world around. And so her every action from that moment on was to enable God's dream of justice and peace to become a reality. For she believed that the birth of her baby meant that the world was about to turn. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who awake. You fixed your sight on the servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, for the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You 
will show your might with the strong to fight, and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all the tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God, who is love, we gather this day and continue to seek you and to seek ways to be loved to a world divided and in pain. Remind us that it is your nature to be love and that that love extends to all your creation. Remind us that we, like Mary, are highly favored, even when we fall short of all you would hope for us to be. May we always seek first your kingdom. May we always respond, saying, let it be to us according to your word, and may our souls exalt in you. We sing that love comes down at Christmas, and yet the reality is that your love surrounds us now and always, even in times of trial such as these. Lord, may we continue to find avenues to be that love to the lost and lonely, to those who are not like us, to those who are on the margins, who we fail to see with your eyes of love. Hear our prayers for all who grieve the loss of someone dear who will not be present this year. Ease their pain. Hear our prayer for our church and nation. Bind our wounds. Replace our distrust with your empathy and understanding and guide leaders to make decisions for the benefit of all, not just for some. Hear our prayers for the health of the sick and for those who do research to find cures for all maladies that reduce us from being whole. And we take a moment of silence now to remember those dearest in our own hearts and minds asking that you hear our prayers. Lord, we gather this day in anticipation of the love that comes to us now and always. And in response to that love, we pray the words Jesus gave us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We give thanks this day for all good things, for light in the darkness, for healing in sickness, and for Jesus, our Savior and friend, who magnifies God's vision for this world. We welcome your Christmas offerings this day in support of our ongoing ministry. You may donate to the church electronically through our giving page or through the mail. But as we draw ever closer to the truest gift of Christmas, may the Lord bless you and keep you and go with you this day and always in peace. Amen. <laughs>